Hey y'all, today we're building a cabinet for my bandsaw. My family is moving, so unfortunately I won't be able to make any more backyard woodworking videos as that house is being sold. We are searching for a new house, and hopefully one with an indoor workspace. So for the meantime, I'm using my dad's garage and tools, as most of mine are packed away. Thanks dad. This bandsaw, like many of the other tools, was my late grandfather's and has been in storage for years. It's not the most impressive tool, but it means a lot to me, and I'm looking forward to getting it out and using it again. Now this is my first time building a cabinet, drawers, tool stand, or anything else substantial out of plywood. But I have a pretty good idea of what to do based on the hours of YouTube videos I've watched prepping for this. But this will be an adventure as I've also not used a lot of my dad's tools before, so first time for everything. First thing we need to do is build the base cabinet frame. After marking the side panels, I tried using my dad's cordless circular saw, but had a lot of trouble getting it through this 3 quarter inch plywood. So I switched to the more powerful corded saw and made the rest of the cuts with these. After cutting out the two sides and the full bottom, I cut two 4 inch pieces for the top framing since another piece will go on top of the base cabinet to be the cabinet work surface. I started by attaching the top pieces using a guide on the second side, then repeated the same process for the bottom in an attempt to make this as square as possible. You can see that the bottom doesn't go all the way to the back of the side pieces, more on that in a minute. I then measured for the back piece and cut it also out of the 3 quarter inch plywood to help with the rigidity of the cabinet and to help keep the sawdust out of the inside of the cabinet. It is offset inside the cabinet by that same 4 inches as the top bracket. After inserting and pocket screwing it in, I realized I hadn't included any ways to attach the top, so I added a few more pocket screws and then used my plane to get a smooth top area for the surface to lay on. Lots of glue, then I laid the top on and screwed it in place. Now to mount the casters, I added two more boards to the bottom side to give the screws more grab than just the 3 quarter inch plywood material. After gluing and screwing the boards on, I marked and drilled and screwed in the casters. I put two locking versions up front for easy access. And just like that, we have our main cabinet with the enclosed space up front for sawdust free drawers and a back space we will use for cable management. Now for the top edge banding, I planed the surface flat, then glued and nailed strips to the two sides, leaving them a little bit proud. Then I came back and flush cut them to size. I then repeated that step for the front and back. And after some wood filler, I planed the proud areas flat and sanded the entire cabinet. To make the drawers, I was uncertain about how tight they really needed to be, so I cut my side pieces and put them in the cabinet with the drawer slides to then measure how wide the cross pieces really needed to be. Of course I miscut the first ones, but the second ones looked nice and they were tight, so I repeated that cut for the other two drawers as well, uh, so that all of them would be worst case scenario too tight and I could plane them down, uh, and I'd rather have that than be too loose. I decided to make two shallow and one deep drawer as I am the type of person to stack things up and lose items, so the less deep drawers the better. I'm also making these drawers out of standard board sizes available at the big box store since I don't have a table saw or a way to really do any straight resawing. So two of them are going to be 4 inches deep and the other is going to be 8 inches deep. Each of the drawers will have a larger drawer face though to cover the full front of the cabinet to keep as much sawdust out as possible. After the first one was built and the test fit went well, I went ahead and built out the other two. For the bottoms, I'm going to glue and screw plywood on for ease, and I'm still a little paranoid about these things not fitting. The deep drawer is getting a half inch plywood bottom while the two shallower drawers are getting a quarter inch plywood. I glued and clamped down two corners of the bottoms, then drilled and screwed all of the other sides and corners. Then release the clamps and drilled and screwed in those two remaining corners to complete the drawers. After sanding, all of the drawers and cabinets were ready for their first few coats of a water-based poly. Now to install the drawers, I used some scrap wood to do the initial install in the cabinet, trying to get it about a third of the way up the drawer. Because I'm using standard board sizes, the oversized drawer fronts, I'm not overly confident in my ability to really manage tight margins at this point, so I used a 3 quarter inch spacer of the bottom of the drawer to make sure I had zero issues with the bottom of the cabinet rubbing on this drawer. This part was surprisingly easy. Since the drawers were tight, once inserted and pulled it out slightly, it was very easy to get those first screws in. Then I removed the drawers completely to get the last few set. 
big relief here is this drawer goes in and starts functioning flawlessly. Now for the top two. I know my drawer face is five and a half inches for the top two drawers, and I'm going to have the bottom drawer face cover whatever's left. So I measured down, including a quarter inch gap between pieces to mark where the bottom of each drawer should be. And in turn, I'm going to use that as the bottom of each drawer. For YouTube tips again, using small scrap wood pieces to install the drawer slides in the cabinet to get them level on each side and consistent, then the drawer install. Both of these went flawless as well, and by the end I had three functioning drawers. Now for the drawer faces, again using standard wood sizes available, I have my two drawer faces for the top drawer, but the bottom drawer needs an extension to cover the whole cabinet, so I glued two boards together to make that drawer face. While that dried, I measured and cut the mounting holes for the bandsaw in the cabinet top. This bandsaw isn't the lightest in the world, but once I got it on and the bolts lined up with the holes I pre-drilled, it slid right into place. The back two bolts are on the back side of the cabinet, so a lot of the weight is right over that center divider, spreading it down and throughout the entire cabinet. For the front two, they are toward the middle of the cabinet top, so if I find it sagging over time, I can reinforce this area later. I then drilled a hole for the power cords for the drill press and the lamp to be able to get them into the back of the cabinet. Once the drawer faces had dried, they were sanded and had their first few coats of water-based poly applied. Now to install the drawer faces, the top two were fairly easy. I clamped a board to the bottom as a reference and then set the drawer face on it and screwed it in. It wasn't until I got to the bottom one that this really turned into a nightmare. I ended up pulling the drawer and doing the alignment with all measurements. It turned out okay, but don't look at the back of the drawer face to see how many mistake holes there are covered up. We'll need to find a better way to do this next time. Lastly, for power management, I got a 25 foot extension cord to mount here in the back of the cabinet. After mounting the surge protector, I ran the cables down from the top and plugged in the saw while just taping off the lamp as it needs a new plug. For the last pieces, I actually need to use the bandsaw. So before turning it on, I gave it a quick walkthrough to make sure the blade was running straight and the guides were all still intact. After drawing the pieces, it was time for the first cuts. I made a wire catch for the top so that if someone yanks on the cord it won't pull the rest of the wires down. And then a hook to handle the 25 foot extension cable keeping it tucked away and off the ground. All in all I'm really happy with this first cabinet build. Lots of lessons learned for the next one but this is very stable and will be a great storage space and work service for the bandsaw. Thanks for watching. If you like this project be sure and like, comment, and subscribe and I will see you on the next project. Thanks.